All right, today we have on our walking shoes because we have a very busy day. We're gonna head into Epcot to check out the International Festival of the Holidays. And there's certain different shows that happen at weird times. So this video could be very unorganized or really organized. Also, we're gonna try to check out some of the treats and just see what happens. We're excited. Yes. Get the shades on. Let's go check it out. We're gonna attempt to film and go to each of the different holiday celebrations around the world, but their timing is so strange that it's kind of just gonna be hopping from one side of the park to the other. We are already greeted with some Christmas music and this nice banner showing Festival of the Holidays. Just some quick footage of the different festival decorations they have. Of course, it's always smart to get our festival passport so we know what's going on. All right, our first show is in United Kingdom. They do have the uh, holiday cookie stroll with all the different cookies. We did do that last year. By the end of it, we were tired of cookies. I think that one cookie they have different is the Snickers Doodle cookie. And they also have the, uh, what's your prize? Is it the 50th? The 50th? I... Yeah, Celebration cookie? Yeah. Okay. It looks like an ornament. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. The first food booth we come to is Melakli Himaka Holiday Kitchen, which is going to have our Kahlua pork, which is always fantastic. So, we are going to... There it is right up top. We're going to go ahead and hop in line. Here's the Kahlua pork. What is that underneath it? like? It's a sweet purple potato, sweet potato mash or something oh. like that. All right. It's good. Mmm. Pork is always just so good. That's probably their most consistent plate. We want to try the scallops as well, which is right up here. And we're going to wait it out here at the Yukon Holiday Kitchen because they have the scallops. Here's the menu. You can see they've got the seared scallops. They also have the Snickers doodle cookie. Okay, so we aren't planning on doing the cookie stroll, but I did get this cookie. This is the Snickers doodle. So they did give us a little passport stamp. And then there's our seared scallops. We're walking down to United Kingdom. You can see the decorations they have over here. And we're gonna go towards the back. Father Christmas. 1.30, which is where we're heading right now. Something we forgot about that we may try to fit in, I, we might just have to come back to Epcot, but they're doing the Olaf like scavenger hunt as well. And we found one already, which is right back here. Um, we're lining up for the show. All right, we found a little table here that we're gonna eat our food at. Oh yeah, there's a closer view of that tree. Look at that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't think the cookie would be this large, but oh, almost dropped it. It definitely is. That's tasty. Oh. That might be better than any of the cookies we had last year. It was tasty. That's really good. 46, 47, hello everyone, hello, 48, 5, 49, 50, 50. hear yeah, ye, hear yeah, ye, gather round, come on down everyone, gather round, there we come, a wassailing among the leaves of green, love and joy come to you, and to you your wassail too, and God send you a happy new year. Thank you very much to all those gathered among the streets of this fair village. Greetings. I have many names. Some of you call me Santa Claus. But here in the United Kingdom, I am Father Christmas. We gather today to toll the devil's knell. One stroke for every year since the birth of Christ. Now let's see, what was I? 50, I believe, right? And then I had the song, so... 
Excuse me, but what year is this? 2021! Minus 67. That means I have to ring this bell 1,954 more times. <laughs> All right. 68, 69, 70. 71, 72, 73, 74. We'll get back to this a little later. At any rate, I am Father Christmas, and I have been around for many, many years, bringing holiday joy to good children throughout the land. Oh, I've gotten so many letters from so many of you this year. Oh, I got one from you back there, and from you over there. Oh, that Christmas carol that I was just singing, like so many of today's Christmas traditions, originated in the United Kingdom. In fact, it is not uncommon to find groups of carolers, much like yourselves, standing on a street corner, much like this one, singing songs of the season. When I point at you and say, Jingle Bells, I want you to ring those bells as hard as you can. Do you have it? All right, let's try it one time. Jingle Bells! Oh, that's pretty good indeed, yes. <laughs> well, as I was about to tell you all, Jingle Bells! Oh, try to catch her off guard. She was ready for me. I will sing that traditional Welsh Christmas carol. Jingle bells. No, deck the halls. <laughs> I said a traditional Welsh Christmas carol. Jingle bells, that's not from England. That's from New Jersey or someplace like that. So on the parlor last, I'll cue you. You shake that bell really hard, yes? Here we go. One, two, this will be your cue. Deck the horse with boughs of holly. La 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 la. Yes, that's the holiday spirit. Oh, oh, that bell ringing should knock off a couple hundred years from our devil's knell, don't you think? I think so. The sound of carolers in the streets. You know, it reminds me of a picture print from Courier and Ives, or oh, better yet, a scene from a Christmas card. Yes, there's a tradition that really caught on. Did you know that the first Christmas card was sent in England? Back in 1843. That original card caught the attention of an English gift book maker who had a thousand lithograph copies made for which they sold for a shilling apiece. And the rest, as they say, is history. Ooh, I know what you're thinking. I really do. I'm Father Christmas, remember? <laughs> You're thinking enough with the cards and the carols. What about the mistletoe? Am I right? Yes, I knew it! <laughs> There's one in every crowd. You see, the hanging of mistletoe is amongst one of our oldest and, I might add, one of our most popular traditions. It dates back to the druid ceremonials of the winter solstice. Each time a kiss was claimed under the bow, the person would pick off a berry until no berries were left. So, my friend, here's wishing you a bow with many, many berries indeed. There are so many wonderful traditions that come from the countries of the United Kingdom. England, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, each have their own unique customs that help make their holiday season a special time. The United Kingdom has taken the customs and traditions of its countries and shared them with the rest of the world. Perhaps the immortal bard, William Shakespeare, said it best. Ever against that season comes wherein our Savior's birth is celebrated. No spirit dare stir abroad. The nights are wholesome, then no planet strikes. No fairy takes, no witch hath power to charm. So hallowed, here's wishing you all a hallowed and gracious Christmas. One final wish for this holiday season. Hello there. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Happy Holidays to all. Happy Holidays. Well, that was really cool. Again, side note, if we do the Olaf, he's right there. Um, I like that. And for some kind of time frame, it only took 10 minutes. Yeah. Next, you mentioned you wanted to get some of that. All right, what do we got? It's the 
get hot or iced Christmas toddy, and there's uh, non alcoholic and alcoholic. Okay. And as we come inside, it's right here. Here's what it looks like, and you can get a cinnamon stick in it as well. Tasty? All right, I'll try it too. Oh yeah, that's really good. What's cool is their garland has the Christmas crackers in it right there. That's cool. We are gonna head to France now, but I definitely wanna look at this little tea pot. Always a classic to look at. I love how they do this. Look, there's a bird out in front. Oh man, this, this one's always pretty full. Look at all these decorations. They've got those big ornaments over here. Here's what's in the different ornaments. One. Two. Three. Also, I just randomly looked over here and here's the other Olaf. So if we end up getting one of the little maps and doing it, we've already found two. All right, so we found the spot that the next one's at where it's roped off right here. Coming this way. And as we say in my country, Joyeux Noel, that means Merry Christmas. Let me ask. Do you know who I am? We wish you the Père Noël, Father Christmas. I am the good spirit of the season. It is right for me to see all of you in such good spirits. Now, I have another question for you. Have any of you, have you ever written a letter? To my brother Santa Claus is in a hole. Well, in France, if a child writes a letter to me, Père Noël, and puts a return address on the envelope, the French government pays the postage on my reply. <laughs> I did so many letters. I would like to share with you one more fun thing. He come to me from a lovely little girl. Named Babette, who lives with her old daughter Louis and her brother Francois on a farm near Le Beau in the mountains of Provence. A letter, he will give you a bit of the, the flavor of the holiday season in France. Dear Père Noël, even though my brother Francois says Christmas is for babies. I look forward to La Vie du Petit Jésus and a visit from you. Of course she does. The watch night, uh, the watch night, Christmas Eve and eh? the watch night. The watch night is a magical evening when my family and I sit in front of the fire, sipping hot cider, and Uncle Louis tells the story of the girl. The baby Jesus. She goes on to say that her brother teases her about all this. He does not believe in Christmas. He does not believe in Père Noël. But for me, nothing surpasses the, the magic of the watch night. Of the fragile beauty of a child's face on a Christmas morning. Hello. With Christmas still several days away, Uncle Louis secretly decorated the tree. And Francois got Babette to set up the crash. Uh, you mean this word? Crash? The nativity scene. One of the most important symbols of Christmas to the French. Even though it was invented by an Italian. <laughs> The St. Francis of Assisi! He's okay too! <laughs> now, you know the figures that go into the crash, yes? Mary and Joseph, the wise man, the little drummer boy, huh? 
Well, where the book comes from in Provence, the statues one makes for the nativity or some include people from your village. The baker, the priest, little figures made out of clay called Santon. That means little saints. And Babette's wish for Christmas last year was she would get yet another Santon to put into the nativity scene. As if we too was going to worship the baby shares with it. It's a nice custom, no? Huh? Babette was finally old enough to go to midnight mass with Uncle Louis. Oh, it's very beautiful. As Uncle Louis carried a newborn lamb to the priest to symbolize the Lamb of God and then put it into a little cap for Babette to pull around the church for everyone to see with shepherds playing flutes and drums. Later on, for the birthday on, the big supper. Who likes to eat at Christmas time, huh? Last year, for the birthday on, Babette, she had roast goose, pate, Le fromage, oh, very fancy, no? It means cheese. Oh, dessert. Say, a bush did know well. A cake shaped like a U-mog. Even Francois likes that one. <laughs> Put the little saint of the baby Jesus into the crash. And enfin, the last she does before she goes to bed is to set out her shoes for me to fill with treats and goodies. Last year, Papa was a little, uh, <laughs> uh, devilish. Is the shoe I find near the fireplace with her name on it? <laughs> Is Babette's shoe? <laughs> She's a grand pied, eh? A big foot! <laughs> Next morning, Christmas Day, Babette, oh, she, she jumps out of bed, she rolls her eyes, she wakes up on the Francois to go with her to see what I have put under the tree. The Francois, he takes his time. He does not believe in Christmas. He does not believe in the well, remember? But when the children go to the tree, they discover an amazing thing. Not one, but three sad tongues. Two more even than my little friend had wished. Only one is carved to look like her Uncle Louis. Another looks just like her brother. Without him from Swirl, the mother looks just like a sweet little Babette herself. She concludes a letter. You can see. I think Christmas is a very magical day. All I wish is a Christmas tree, Saint Tom, and you, Père Noël, love, Father. It's very sweet, no? And that, mes amis, that is a small taste of a French Christmas seen through the eyes of a delightful little child. I have just received a letter from. Can you guess who from? We oui, Monsieur Francois. He emailed me this morning. So I think he believes in the Père Noël now. Just a little bit too. Huh? And what of you? Do you? We live in Panawell!
Christmas and good new year, everyone. So that one took about 12 minutes. Um, they're really not taking too long at all. Our next stop is going back to Canada. So here's where the show is going to be here in about 20 minutes. We're gonna head back into Canada and find that Olaf. All right, we're gonna see if maybe Olaf's back here. Looks like gingerbread cookies. All right. There you have it. We're gonna run down here to one of the port buildings and go ahead and get that Olaf map since we have some time. I know they always have a map for sale down at this other one. Let's see if Port of Entry has one as well. It does not have a sign out in front though. I don't think they're doing them at this one, so we'll need to go to the next one. And they're walking by and Joyful's performing right now. And look at that tree, how massive it is. So there is a sign out front, so this is usually where we get the map and that's where we're gonna get one today. We're gonna head over this way. These are the prizes. Whoa, pins are up there. Which pin do you want? I think the Wally and Wally. The Wally? One. Yes. Awesome. Wow, those were some of the best prizes I think we've seen. We got a Disney pin. So we actually have a few of these that we can put these stickers on. All right, we've got the show at 2.45. We know that one. That one was the France, and we know the gingerbread. This? Yep, was the France. Christmas crackers. That one was United Kingdom. Gingerbread Canada. And that's gonna be Canada. Look at us go, we've already got three. That worked out. Oh no. Oh, that worked out pretty darn good. journey across Canada during this amazing holiday season. I am April and again we are the Canadian Holiday Voyagers. You guys doing okay down there? You comfortable? All right, good. Just checking. The first song we did is a Canadian holiday favorite called the Christmas Jig. Now my friends, the band and I have traveled here from many different parts of Canada in order to share with you our own unique regional holiday traditions. Now each one of us comes with a different part of the story because Canada is truly a nation of many different cultures. For example, my good friend Jordan here is from Alberta. Now here is the style of music they share in his part of the country during the holidays. <laughs>
celebrate the holidays with a big feast called Le Réveillon. And that is where all of my family and friends gather together for some great food and a wonderful celebration. And I'm hoping Pattern Noel has something good for me this year. You all know who that is, right? Some of you do. Well, some of you may know him as Santa Claus, but whether you know him as Santa Claus or Pattern Noel, before he visits, it's time for Le Réveillon! You're fabulous. Well, as I said earlier, Canada is a nation of many different cultures. Now, certainly, one of the great things we honor is the cultural traditions of our indigenous First Nation Native people. Now, the youngsters in the First Nation sing Christmas carols in order to appease the mysterious Nalayoks and earn their presence. So, in honor of that tradition, we will sing for you now and earn our presence from the Nalayoks. I thought they sounded excellent and it was really cool. Um, we are about 10 minutes from our next show at Japan, so we had to leave a little early on that one, but it's definitely a fun one to watch. It's a very busy day, but it looks like the, I can't ever pronounce this one. Lahayam. Lahayam. La is very popular. And we've got Olaf up there, sighting. Yep, looks like it. A dreidel. This is where the, uh, the Hanukkah show is. Oh, it's over here? Yeah. We're coming back to the Hanukkah storyteller. You can see, what time are we coming back? 6.05? I do like how they have this little like scroll out in front of all the things to, you can read about it. Just walking by Morocco and Olaf is up there as well. And what is that? It does kind of look like an oh, olive, olive leaf or something. I think that's what these are, yeah. Okay, cool. We're gonna head down to the America Pavilion real quick and see, they, I know they've got some pretty decent holiday food, so we're gonna to try to get that, bring it back and watch this show. And then later tonight is the Candlelight Processional. Look at this massive tree they have out in front. Pretty, pretty large crowd. Looks like the line comes all the way out and around here. Let's go look at the menu and see. That's what the tree looks like. And they have, Oh yeah, pumpkin gingerbread cheesecake, that sounds delicious. This is one of those instances to where it's a little unorganized on the video because we don't have time to really wait super long in a line. So I think we're just gonna have to get a Mickey pretzel and there's some kind of apple, yeah, there's some kind of apple pie drink. Here were those seasonal drinks. We've got the spiked frozen apple pie and the frozen apple pie. We just got the regular frozen apple pie. And then, of course, like I said, the Mickey pretzel with cheese. All right, here's the frozen apple pie. That is good. That's the tasty. Yeah, it actually is. That's tasty stuff. This is an exciting time of year in Japan. Many are asking, how many more nights must I sleep before it's New Year's Day? On New Year's Day, we'll fly kites. On New Year's Day, let's spin tops. Please come, please come soon. New Year's Day. Minasan, akemashite omedeito gozaimasu. That's how the Japanese say, Happy New Year. My name is Sakura. Yes, the old year is gone and it's time to welcome the new year. So even though it's a bit early, I want to wish everyone a happy new year. Now, let's say it together in Japanese for good luck. Repeat after me. Akemashite, omedeito, 
gozaimasu. Very good. That's the spirit. Ireshaimase. Welcome to the Japan Pavilion and our celebration of Oshogatsu, the traditional Japanese New Year, which lasts from January 1st through January 7th. As a humble street vendor, But what I have to sell is a very important part of Oshogatsu. And here it is. It's called a Daruma doll. It's rather handsome, don't you think? The Daruma is like a good luck charm. As you can see, it has no pupils in his eyes. The custom among Japanese is to make a wish and paint in the left eye. Then, if your wish comes true before the end of the year, you must paint in the other eye. Now. What if your wish doesn't come true? Then you can always try again next year because I've got lots of Daruma dolls for sale. It is shy, it is shy, Daruma dolls for sale. I've got big Darumas, little Darumas, all kinds of Daruma dolls for sale. It is shy. The Daruma dates back to the sixth century when a Buddhist monk named Daruma Taishi began a lifelong journey. His journey was difficult. And oftentimes, the roads that he traveled was plagued with robbers. Daruma said, I believe that if the body was in poor health, then the spirit would also be weak. So let's develop a system of exercise to keep the mind and body healthy, as well as a means to deal with robbers who often prey on monks. Hiya! Later, the system of exercise was taken to Japan and became huh, huh, huh. <laughs> Karate. Years later, Daruma went to a temple at the top of a great mountain where he meditated for nine years. Imagine remaining motionless for nine years. Many of us can't stay still for nine minutes, right? The legend goes on to say that Daruma lost the use of his limbs after remaining motionless for so long that this, it is said, is why the Daruma doll is without arms and legs. The Daruma is a symbolic reminder for the Japanese of patience and persistence through the ups and downs in life. As we say, Nana Karobia Oki, which means literally knock down seven times, get up eight. You see, it always comes back to the upright position, no matter how hard it's knocked over. It reminds you of a child's punching doll, doesn't it? It is shy to shy. It's a time for rejuvenation, asking for blessings, and yes. celebrating the coming of spring. In olden times, each person became a year older on New Year's Day rather than on their birthday. We Japanese literally sweep the old year away with very thorough house cleaning and freshening up of interiors before we can welcome the new year. And special nengajo, or New Year greeting cards, are dropped at the post office weeks in advance where they are kept until they're delivered to every household in the entire country, all at once on New Year's Day. Another thing always done in advance is a preparation of tasty oseshi lioli delicacies to be served cold over the first days of the new year, giving women of the household a rare break from cooking. Nearly everyone should be free from stress, work or study, allowing time to be with family to carry out centuries old rituals and traditions together. New Year's always has been, and still is today, the most important holiday in Japan. Let's imagine for a moment that you are all Japanese on New Year's Eve. You would stay up late and eat. Yes, we eat soba noodles, that's right, hoping to live a long and healthy life like the soba noodle. At midnight, you would hear the ringing of the huge bronze Buddhist temple bells. Gong, gong, hajoya no kane. Can anybody guess how many times these bells ring for? 100 plus 8, everybody? That signifies the conquering of the 108 bono, which means earthly desires. So, with the bono defeated by bell ringing, we feel that we can start the new year with a clean slate. Then, you rise early on ganjutsu, the first day of the new year. You put on new clothes from head to toe and go out to watch the first sunrise of the year, called Hatsu Hinode. Before breakfast, you drink otoso, a sweet spiced wine. It is said that by drinking otoso, you vanquish evil spirits within you and prevent sickness within a mile of your home. 
Then you run to the mailbox to check for beautiful Nengajo or New Year's cards received from family and friends. Later in the day, callers to your home may come in for a meal o seshi iori and otoso. Then we go to the Shinto shrine to pray for blessings for the New Year. Everyone in Japan gets into the spirit of Oshogatsu, enjoying the symbolism and beautiful customs of the New Year. Oshogatsu is a time for reflection for family and friends, and of course, fun. It's a holiday, much like Christmas, full of goodwill, friendship, and the renewal of hope and happiness. Ah, but I've spoken for too long. I must get back to selling my Daruma dolls. Yushai, yushai, yushai. But before I go, I leave you all with this wish. Mina san dozo, yoyo tosho omukai kudasai. May your Daruma's eyes be painted in each and every year, and all your wishes come true. Happy New Year, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day at the Epcot's International Festival of the Holidays. We're going to update our little sticker book here with Morocco. Kayam. Kayam. Nice. So let's find the Japan one, the American Adventure one. Marathon Gardens Theater has one also. Oh, yeah. Okay, this one was a very sneaky. Over here by this photo spot is where Olaf is. And if we zoom in, there he is. All right. Nice. All right, down towards the end of the theater where the sign is, there's Olaf. It's got like sheets of music or what is yeah. that? So this is the theater. So there is one at the American Adventure. It's not a like show or anything, but what the America Pavilion has is meet Santa. So you can come over here and actually meet Santa. And here's Santa Claus. So Olaf was not back here since Santa's here. Okay, after much searching, I'm not sure this is the best location for Olaf since this is where everybody's crowded around, but right in front of the tree. Kwanzaa candles. Kwanzaa candles. That was actually a really tough one. This is the, the show's not for an hour and 20 minutes and this is already the standby line for the candlelight processional on our schedule italy's next show here's where the show's gonna be but for now we're looking around for olaf first we have literally been looking all over the place for the little guy <laughs> and he's right here before you go in they are hiding him in different spots this year Whew. that was a rough one Let's go ahead and get Germany, I think, while we're just waiting on the show. That way, we're almost done with this thing. All right, trying to find Olaf super fast. This is a tough one. He's over here in the window in Germany. He's got candy canes. Right, right over here. That's pretty, pretty, pretty tricky. Ah, oh, three more. We've got show in Italy. We've got three more Olafs. And what are the other shows we might try? Norway and Mexico. Don't know if we'll be able to make China because it's at one of those times to where- I think they're all over. They're over, yeah. And not sure about the candlelight thing because there's so many, so many people. Should be starting, but I have no idea where she's at right now. I'm going to share this space right here with you. Ah, very nice. Bon Natale. Bon Natale. Do we know what this means? Who knows? Merry Christmas. Oh. Huh? I know, you just learned. Bon Natale, yeah? Huh? Very nice. I have a story for you, huh? Everyone ready? My name is Labafana. Oh, yeah. And I am a witch
but I am a good witch. It's okay. <laughs> yes, and, and my name in Italia means gift giver. I am the gift giver here. Uh, right, if you have been a good child, huh? Okay. Oh, everyone, you've been a good child. I bring you uh, nice toys and sweets. But if you are not so good, what do I bring you? Cool. Oh, you said that very quickly. <laughs> are you familiar with this product, huh? Yes. You are? Oh, no. no. <laughs> very good, very good. Now, in Italia, I, uh, I, I listen and I say, oh, wait, in America, there is a gift giver like me. Uh, he has a beard. I do not have a beard. But he has a beard and he says, ho, 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 Santa Claus. Ah, all right, between you and me, uh, I want to tell you something and I don't mean to brag, but I have been bringing gifts down the chimney uh, before, oh, oh, so long before old Saint Nick was even a glimmer in his mama's eye, huh? Yeah, it's all right. And uh, what does he fly? Reindeer and a sleigh. What? Sleigh and a reindeer. Oh, poor love of Anna. She has no sleigh, no reindeer. What do you suppose Labafana flies? Broom! A oh, broom, because I am a witch! <laughs> no, nothing? <laughs> not scared? Not scared? So what if I... Oh, you are so scared. What if I only bring you socks and underwear for Christmas? <laughs> that would be very scary, huh? All right, I'll remember, I'll remember. Right, you'll be good, okay. Now, uh, Santa Claus, uh, when does he visit and when does he bring the gifts, huh? What night? Go ahead and yell it out. You're not Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. When does La Bafana bring the gifts? The Epiphany. Ah, the Eve of the Epiphany. January 5th. Why? Everyone say, why La Bafana? Why La Bafana? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> I will tell you. For this is my story. Over 2,000 years ago, I lived in a lonely cottage on the edge of a great highway where caravans of camels would come by all the time. You don't see camels very often now, do you, huh? Yes. Maybe some Teslas, but sort no camels. <laughs> well, one day, I was sweeping in front of my little cottage when a group of strange men come up to me, to me, La Bafana, and they are so exotic. They are from a faraway place. They are dressed uh, so rich like kings and everything. And they are talking to little old me, and they are talking with a funny word. Words Labafana does not understand, huh? But they are so excited. They are pointing at this way and at that way. And there is one word I remember. Bethlehem. You have heard the story, huh? Yes. The Bethlehem. Yes. Well, you see, I was so long ago, Labafana did not know of the Bethlehem. Not at all, no. But lucky for me, the men, they talk with their hands, huh? <laughs> this Labafana understands, huh? Tell, they tell me, they say that the big star in the sky is to tell that a great king was born in the Bethlehem and that they are following his star. Oh, well, La Bafana knows. She has seen the star. It is why the sky has been so bright the last few nights. And if I'm being honest, I was getting a little annoyed because it was keeping me up at night, huh? <laughs> but it's okay because La Bafana was so excited, so caught up in the story of finding the baby king that the men, they invited me to go with them to the Bethlehem. And for a moment, I had a longing to follow the star. And then I thought, what? You crazy, La Bafana. <laughs> you pasta. Oh, camels, the stars, strange men in the middle of the night, huh? Not so good, not so good. So, I tell the men, I say, no. La Bafana cannot come. And so the men, they go to the Bethlehem without me. But you know, I stand outside in the night and I look up and watch the star. And I wonder. A few days later, a young shepherd comes running into my village and he comes to me and he says, La Bafana, why do you not go to the Bethlehem? Everyone is talking about the baby king that was born, born in a poor stable. But they say, that he is the son of God. Yeah. Just then, just then the sky, it opens up and it is filled with a bright, bright light, so bright that La Bafana cannot even look. Oh, and it's as if the young king's star had burst into glory and the sounds, the sounds of the angels singing. So 
beautiful, like nothing I had ever heard before. I must go to the Bethlehem. So I run, I run inside to look for a gift. Because you see, the kings, they had these fancy gifts for the little bambino. He's so special. I had nothing, so I wanted to find something for him. So I look and I search, but all I can find is a little doll that I made from a scrap of wool. And I think, ah, it's better than nothing, huh? So, I am so excited. I will go to the Bethlehem. I will see the baby king. So I run outside to follow the star, but it is not there. The beautiful star, she is no longer there. It is gone. La Bafana had waited too long. I will not be able to find the Christ child. And so, for 2,000 years, I have been looking for the Jesu Bambino, the Christ child. And on the eve of the epiphany, when the kings arrived in the Bethlehem, I climb down the chimney, and I look into the faces of the children, and I think, ah, could you be him? And when they are sleeping, you think this could be so, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Just in case I am looking into the face of the Christ child himself, I leave a gift. Now, you are probably all thinking, oh, La Bafana, that story, it's so sad, huh? No, not so. Ask me why, La Bafana? Because in Italia, Christmas is a time of great celebration. It is a time to gather the family, everyone, the grandmothers, the grandfathers, the aunts, the uncles, cousins, everyone. And we, we cook, we cook, and we, and we eat, and we laugh, and we tell stories around the table, and the little bambinos, they play with the toys that I bring, and, and we sing, and we dance, while we dance, it's molto bello, you know what I mean, huh? See? Now, before I go, I'm going to share with you my version. Are uh, they saying we have here in Italia? Pesqua con chi voi, Natale con i toy. Celebrate Easter with whomever you choose, but Christmas always with your own, huh? Buon Natale! Grazie, everyone, grazie. Thank you for listening to my story. Oh, she was very good. I like that one a lot. Um, very interactive. Now heading to Mexico. After Mexico, heading to Norway. And then we'll make the decision on if we're gonna go to the candlelight. I felt that, yep. Yeah. Mm, we'll see. They do have the little holiday kiosk. We're gonna go ahead and finish the Olaf little scavenger hunt. So, China, Norway, and Mexico. Just for reference, this is where their show is. All right, we think Olaf's back here in the back. Right by Nine Dragons Restaurant. There he is. There we go. Now, over in Norway, I like their little lights that are on now. Now our video is not really organized too much because we're just wonder walking around trying to find Olaf. So we think he's over on the other side. Okay, so there's meet and greet happening right there. If we go over here to the left, over here, there's Olaf. All right, one more. Okay, thank goodness. Before we got too far deep, there is Olaf. Right up here. Complete. <laughs> now up here at the, I don't know what it's called, but it's the Mexico little holiday kitchen. They have some kind of margarita holiday thing. And also, we're gonna see if we can grab some food. Here's the menu. I think I'm gonna do a, what are we doing? The first one, that one. Are we doing the? I didn't know though if I should do cranberry or not. Mm. Or Chad is probably gonna get the, the, the W there, the win. There's our churro. Don't you churro? Yeah, not just, standard. not just standard. What'd you get there? Cerveza. Cerveza. What was that? Uh, it's a chorizo um, tostada. Tostada. And there's our horchata margarita. This is tasty. Very good. Now for the horchata margarita. Yeah. 
Kind of tastes like cinnamon toast crunch milk. It's very tasty. Now for your drink. You're probably gonna love it. Now a bite of the uh, churro. I don't know, that's good though. That's a good churro. Okay, so I'd give this video slightly <laughs> unorganized. Ish. There's just a lot. There's a lot to offer at Epcot. For yes. Holidays. Here's the deal. Scavenger hunt, Olaf thing. Most of the shows, some food. And I think that's it. Because we're gonna go ahead and leave. It is Banana. <laughs> stinking packed. But for today, this video is probably already decently long. So many people will walk up by the tree now that it's got its lights turned on and then buy one more pack of pins to see if we can get one of those cool Mr. Toads or whatever. And then I think that's, we'll be out in the parking lot. And here's the last of the tree before we leave. Here are some of the inter International Festival of the Holidays decorations. All right, now we're gonna go see if we can find one of those pin boxes that have, well, if you watched our Magic Kingdom video, one of those. If you watched our Magic Kingdom video, they had like a pack that had basically like Magic Kingdom rides. They did not have that pack at Epcot. However, they have Tiny Kingdom Series 4 now. So here's what that looks like. So we got one of those, and of course you, they're, they're smaller ones, Tiny Kingdom, and you get three of them in here. So we're gonna pull over and see which three we got. I don't know which one I'd want. All right, here's our first one. Oh, the land. Oh, that goes with, look. That's cool. Kind of like that one, but we have an extra one at home. That's nice, a that's a good one. Our next one, <gasps> Sebastian. Sebastian. Oh, woohoo. The last one. Frontier Trading Frontier Post. Post. We, we still have Frontierland, right? Or did we get rid of it? Yeah, no, we have that. Nice. All right. Holy cow. There's Good so. Night. <laughs> Good night. There's so much to do at Epcot for the holidays. You can't do it all in a day. No. It's insane. I mean, that's without riding any rides, too. Mm. This video was back and forth. I knew it would be. We kind of tried to do as much as we could today, so we had to do a lot of jumping around. Um, but everything we ate was really good. I don't think there was any issues with any of the food. Nope. Was there? Uh -oh. It was all very good. Um, they gave us a pin for our prize with that. That was really cool. And what else? All the Christmas stories, holiday stories are great. Mm -hmm. So, fun. that being said, we are dogged. We are tired. We're going to go home. Does it for tonight. Thanks for watching.